to have a, a fair in your own hometown that was science-based, that was space-based, that was future-based, was an incredibly exciting thing and very um, inspiring. You got really jazzed. I mean, I remember running around the fair just in a constant state of excitement about this exhibit and that uh, ride and these things that, that, that were all based on what was going on right then. And, and you had astronauts and cosmonauts visiting the fair. I mean, John Glenn visited the fair, arguably the, the, the biggest rock star astronaut of all time. And before him was German Titov, who was a, a, a Soviet Union uh, cosmonaut. And so you, you had this sense of maybe there's a way we can have a world at peace in the future through science and space exploration. People didn't really start getting excited about the fair until they saw the Space Needle going up, which was only, you know, within the year before the fair opened. So the fair had been in planning since, you know, the, the, the 50s. And uh, by 1961, um, most of the hard work had been done, but I don't think the public started to get on board until really late 61, early 62, when they were seeing these things actually rising, and the biggest symbol of all, a 605-foot space needle, rising out of the ground, suddenly made it all real. It was really going to happen. We were really going to do this thing. Well, as far as the fair was concerned, that was all just positive. There was no, no negative downside to that uh, as a 10-year-old. You were... Um, I loved the spaces, I loved the science center, it was gorgeous. All, all of these things, the Space Needle was extremely exciting. The, what was called the Coliseum now is known as the Key Arena. Absolutely amazing place to be inside of. So from the fair side of things, that was a symbol of hope. The other side of the fair was it, it, it put Seattle on the map. Um, and that was very exciting for me uh, because I, I, like a lot of, I think, kids who read a lot, I was always tremendously excited when I saw the word Seattle in print in a national publication or a book, because it's sort of like, oh, we exist, we're real. And now, all of a sudden, the World's Fair had shown the spotlight on Seattle around the world. And you were cover of Life magazine, of all things, not just once, but twice. And even as a, a, a kid, I was aware of that and would see it on my parents' coffee table and going, that's, that's Seattle, right there. Tremendously exciting. It's been called a jewel box fair. It took up about 75 acres, which in fair terms is relatively on the small side. What that meant, though, it was a very human-scaled fair and one that you could get your head around. You weren't feeling overwhelmed. In a couple of days, you pretty much had seen the fair. And, and it was also very coherent. It had a theme, this, this orientation towards the 21st century and towards science and technology and towards the future kind of went throughout. The other thread going through it was this international idea that we are a Pacific Rim city and that countries around the Pacific Rim and in Europe had representation there. So the combination of the future orientation and the international flavor of it really gave you a sense of a coherent experience. When you have an event like that happening in your city that's being widely publicized across the country, suddenly every relative, friend, everybody you know, ever thought they might come and visit, picks that summer to come and visit Seattle. And, and we had relatives and friends of the family coming from all over the country. The surprising number of people, especially I think by today's standards, came by car. They didn't fly in. It was too expensive to fly, and gas was cheap. And they had the time, so they drove from the Midwest. It also gave me an excuse, as a 10-year-old, to be the designated tour guide and go to the fair with each new group that came and run around and show them all my favorite stuff right from the get-go. The first thing that, that we always liked to take them on was the Sky Ride, which was a cable car suspended ride that went diagonally across the whole fairgrounds and you could sort of see the whole thing from maybe 30 40 feet in the air and um, I'm sorry that's gone now it was I, I loved that you know when you're 10 you're trying to imagine yourself as a grown-up 
what am I going to be like when, I, when I'm all grown up? And of course, I did the math and I figured out in the year 2000, I'd be 48 years old. So what the heck at 10 would my 48-year-old self be like? And what would I be doing? One of the things that the fair made you think about was those sorts of things. Obviously, we would all be involved in space travel. I'd probably be able to go into orbit just like John Glenn by the time the year 2000 rolled around, because that would be a very common thing, of course. Uh, but the other thing was, I think the international focus of the fair gave you a sense of being a citizen of the world, something larger than just being a kid in Seattle. With the World's Fair, it really brought practically anybody who was anybody to Seattle. And all of a sudden, Seattle became kind of a hub of a certain kinds of cultural experiences, both performance and in terms of fine arts. I mean, there were great exhibitions of paintings and things that had never, I think, graced Seattle before. So there was a sense that culturally Seattle could and would be and should be a player on the national scene as a cultural center. 1962 and the Seattle World's Fair was really the birth of modern Seattle. But a lot of the things and the ethos that we take for granted right now as sort of our Seattle style, our Seattle culture, our Seattle approach to things has its roots in 1962. If I was going to say what's the legacy going forward, it's that we have this centralized meeting place of our city and its culture and its fairs and its events and its festivals that happens right in the, in the heart of the city and we have the space to do it and we have the place to do it and that's going to be one of the major uh, continuing contributions for the next 50 from the World's Fair in 1962.